Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Dating in the Wild. This is episode 13, and it has been quite some time since I've shared with you. It's been, oh my gosh, nine months since my last Dating in the Wild story. The reason being is that towards the end of last year, I got involved in a play, and so I took a break from doing this and really just kind of focused on that. And also, I'm not doing a lot of dating in this area, so unfortunately I didn't really have that many stories to tell as far as dating in the wild goes. But now here we are in March of 2020, my first episode for 2020, and we're in this coronavirus self-quarantine time. I figured why not get back into telling my dating in the wild stories. And I actually have one. Over the last nine months, I have not gone out on a ton of dates, but I do have some dating stories, a few, just a few that I want to share. And with this COVID-19 affecting the world, you know, everyone has Italy on the mind because they've been hit the hardest. And it turns out that two of my dates from 2019 were with Italian men. And I mean Italian nationals. I mean men with heavy Italian accents. Because Italy has been hit pretty hard, I've been in communication with the second Italian man that I went on dates with, and I texted him and I said, is your family and friends okay? And luckily they all are. But it was a reminder of a perfect dating in the wild story because I did meet him out and about. So here's the story. In 2019, I got invited to these events hosted by InfoList by a friend named Jeff Gund. So Jeff hosts these InfoList parties. They're networking events for the industry, and normally people are dressed really nicely or dressed to whatever theme there might be, and they're in relation to some big event like um, the Oscars or Comic-Con. And towards the end of last year, I went to one of these parties. I think you may have remember from my previous episodes I brave a lot of events by myself. And so here I was at one of these events, and I met Italian gentlemen. Let's talk about the first one, actually. The first one happened over the summer. And I believe I met this gentleman at a pre-cons soiree. Towards the end of the evening, I was wandering Sky Bar by myself. That's where this particular party was held. And this gentleman comes up to me and he was like, you need a drink. Well, sure enough, I was actually just heading to the bar to get some water. And he invites me over and I, I'm like, well, I'm just here to get water. And we start having a conversation because he wanted to know who I was, why I was there. And I, of course, asked him why he was there. Turns out he was not in the entertainment industry at all. He was in real estate. I have a real estate background. And so we started chatting about that. This really nice Italian gentleman then Um, you know, asked for my number, said he'd love to take me out to his favorite Italian restaurant here in town. Now, as I mentioned earlier, he had a pretty heavy accent. No worries, you know, texting is fine. So after some texting, we coordinated on when and where this dinner date would be. And so I cannot tell you the name of the restaurant because I don't remember at this time. I'd have to look it up in my phone log to see where we went. But It is an Italian restaurant in Hollywood that has been there for quite some time. It's not Mousson Franks or any, you know, but it is a well-known Italian restaurant that's been there for a while. You can kind of tell by the establishment. You can tell by the staff. It's a staple in that neighborhood. In any case, we go, we sit down, we have dinner. We have a really nice dinner. I try to understand him as best as possible, but turns out he somehow ended up here, had some real estate investments and... Sure enough, that's what he was focused on. And because of his association with the Beverly Hills Chamber of Commerce, that's why he was at that particular party. I want to fast forward to date number two, because that's kind of where things got interesting. So date number two, he offers to cook me dinner. Well, you know, unfortunately that means I have to go to his home. I'm like, okay, how safe will this be? Through conversation, I'm reassured everything's fine. You know, he's in an apartment complex. He has a roommate. You know, I tell someone where I'm going to be and I show up at his apartment. 
I park and guest parking. He walks me up to his apartment. And the thing that really was interesting when I walked in, one of two things, was that his apartment had a lot of Christmas items, Christmas figurines, Christmas decor. And he basically told me that he was a fan of Christmas. He was just one of those people who really loved Christmas. He had all these like little figurines and he had all these little knickknacks and they were just like all over the living room. And I thought, hmm, this is very interesting. Um, is that a red flag? To some people that might be a red flag. To me, I kind of already knew from date number one that it probably wouldn't go anywhere. But this date number two, getting to see his apartment, well, it really kind of solidified that. Really to me was like, hmm, yeah, this person can be a friend. So is that a red flag? I don't think so, not necessarily, but to me, definitely a turn off. So that's what happened with Italian gentleman number one. Now, fast forward to a couple months later, Jeff holds another info list party. This might have been a holiday party. I'm at this holiday party again by myself, but this time I see some familiar faces. I've gone to a couple of these parties at this point, and I'm seeing some of the same people, some fashion designers and some other actors. At one point, I'm having a conversation with a fashion designer who introduces me to this French lady. Her English is very limited, but here we are, these two ladies just kind of trying to have a conversation with each other. And again, because it's a holiday party, it's one of these info list parties, we're dressed really nicely. We're trying to understand each other, trying to have a conversation, and then we're approached by two Italian men. One was very young and handsome. He was essentially a model. The other gentleman that was with him, now I couldn't tell if he was like his manager or his agent. That's kind of the vibe that he gave off. But once we started conversation, I discovered that his friend was indeed just a friend who was a former model actor himself. How they ended up here, I don't really know. But nonetheless, me and the older Italian gentleman start having a conversation. I think in true Italian man fashion, just like the other gentleman, was pretty aggressive, not aggressive, but assertive. Assertive in asking me out, asking for my phone number. Those two gentlemen also approached me towards the end of my evening at this party. I was essentially on my way out, finishing up the conversation with the French lady when these two gentlemen came over. So we're going to call the gentleman who asked me out Lolo. Now Lolo ends up texting me and messaging me and setting up a date. And we have happy hour one day after he gets off of work. Can't tell you where we went, but during the date, let's just say he was very forward. He sat next to me. There was a lot of like trying to hold my hand already. Things of that nature. Things that I think a lot of people would describe as aggressive. We have a few appetizers I think he has a drink, and by the end of the evening, as he walks me to my car, I remember him trying to kiss me. Actually, he did kiss me, but let's just say it was very forceful in a way. I don't want to keep using the word aggressive, but that's kind of the word that kind of comes to mind. But it was aggressive in not a threatening way, because it kind of already went with his entire vibe, um, just the way that he spoke the passion that he had, and the things that we discussed during our conversation, you could tell this was someone that was going to be very devoted to someone or very passionate about whoever that they fell in love with. And what's interesting is that date happened right before Christmas. And within a day or two, he was leaving to go back to Italy for the holidays. But that forwardness kind of extended into the holidays where he essentially was messaging me from Italy, telling me things about what he was doing, how, you know, his time spent with his family. But then it just kind of faded. So after the new year, when he was back, there were no more messages about meeting up and whatnot. So similar to the first Italian gentleman, I think they could sense that I just was not interested. I didn't even have to say it. I did not have to message anything directly. It was through the messaging and the conversation that they could sense that I was not interested. I guess you could say they could really read into not only body language, but the subtext within actual communication. So now just some friendly hellos here and there between me and these two gentlemen. And that's it. Those were some of my more recent dates towards the end of 2019. And now here we are, 
This has been Glow with Dating in the Wild. I hope you have a story out there to share. I'd be happy to share your story or to talk to you about your dating in the wild story. I know times are tough to actually date in the wild because we should be practicing social distancing, but if you come across an experience out there, please let me know. We'd love to hear your dating in the wild stories. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.